Wanted to make sure I had the video cranked up. Hello, everybody. The old Tuba Radio Network on the air. Evening, Dennis. Reminding you that on 27085, that's Channel 11, that's where we are transmitting this evening in Central California. So wherever you might be, give us a listen on Channel 11. If you're out of the skip zone such that it may be, you can tune us in at oldtuberadio.net on your universal media net web audio device or perhaps you are watching live on the Google YouTube video wherever you might be the old tube radio network 30 plus years of hanging out on this frequency on Saturday evenings to talk about and talk with and talk on our classic old tube radios the ones that were made for the class D 11 meter Citizen Band Radio Service beginning in 1959, 1958, up through about 1978 when they stopped making the tubes. But CB still goes on, and we still recreate what it might have sounded like back in those days. And I hope you can join us, the shortwave listeners, and our tube radio operators as we start the old tube radio network. Uh, we start with direct and net roll call of the shortwave listeners, those who may or may not have a radio but like to check in. Let us know that they are listening. And this is the eighth week of our eight-week roster. So let's find out uh, if Double Zero is hanging around. Double Zero is definitely hanging around and... Going to have the last two raw for the eighth week rockster, and uh, glad to be here. And seventy threes to all the listeners. All right, glad you are there. Always gets us started out quite nicely. And if I click the thing, you will be checked in on the big board. And over here, let me uh, quickly see who is listening out there to. The old tube radio network, West Virginia, California, North Carolina, Kentucky, Georgia. Lots of stations in California, Washington, Colorado. You never know if the e-skip's going to be happening. Maryland, we've got a UK station already in. And a host of others. There's British Columbia. Hello to uh, Albert, who says it's the first time listening. Hopefully... In your area, there is some type of a get-on-the-air night or old radio night or some such item that allows you to do what we are about to do here in Central California on Channel 11. SWL number one is checked in. One of the founding people that started the gathering, got involved with the gathering on the Channel 11 when a lot of us would bring our tube radios uh, to this channel because most of us had channel 11 crystals and would get away from the noise of the other frequencies for a while. We kind of just stuck to that. SWL number two also, one of the original, let's go down to channel 11 and, <laughs> and make sense. Hello, OBP, who is, uh, that's Kevin, and he's hanging out over on the video chat side. If you want to say hello to... Mr. OBP, Kevin, feel free to go over there, and he is a very knowledgeable person. I will, I'm sure I will be asking him questions throughout the evening tonight. SWL3, I will get a proxy check-in for Rob, who I uh, saw on the Facebook side. SWL number four. SWL5. I did not see Ida this week. Or yes, I did. You know what? I did. At the beginning of the week, she said hello to everybody. Ida's one of the net controllers. SWL6. Another one of our net controllers. SWL7. Uh, SWL7, checking in. And sounding good doing it. Thanks for listening to the old tube radio network. We go over to 11 and 12. Jim and Lisa checking in via email. SWL 13. Mike sometimes checks in at oldtuberadio.net, which you can do. I see a few of you have already posted there, and I will try and pick you up at the appropriate time. Also, on the video side, listening, OBP, of course. There's Mr. Ed. 
Out of Iowa, John, Mighty Juliet Whiskey, listening in, and also Brian, KUH, sitting in the radio room. Amongst all the classic gear that he has over there, listening to our classic gear here on the Old Tube Radio Network, SWL 14. SWL 15. Shortwave listener 16. SWL 17. SWL 18. SWL 19. SWL 20. Checking to see if I'm supposed to proxy him in. He may be heading towards the radio room. We're on a, a, a bit of a delay if you're listening on your Universal Media Net Web device, but actually wanting to transmit on the regular device. Uh, device. Hello to Foreland. Mike Sierra Alpha in there. Saying good evening on the video side. Uh, the guy that runs old radio nights and had... I, I never ran a Cobra 2000. I don't think anybody ever went to a shack that where there was a Cobra 2000. What a, what a pretty radio. I can see why they were... If you weren't running tube stuff, that's where you wanted to be. Hello, Mr. JT. And uh, thanks for your, your network tonight. Looks like the skip was running well. And as usual, punching a hole in the ozone to get there. SWL 23. Shortwave listener 24. 24, check it out. Got you checked in. I need a, I need a bigger table. Right? I, I need less junk. Maybe that's what I need. Less junk. I keep the table I've got. Uh, thanks, Joseph, for checking in. SWL 25. Over to page two, yet, yes, I still do not have the crossband radio up and running, so if anyone is listening on the uh, 550 simplex and you hear uh, someone giving us a holler, please uh, please give me a relay if you can. SWL 27. SWL 29. I believe I have a proxy check and noted for that. Over to SWL 31, and let me see, that is Robert and Teresa out of uh, Tennessee. Don't see Tennessee on the board, but they should be here. I would curious to see how uh, Robert did. He went to the Dayton, I, I call it the Layton Hamvention, which was the week after Dayton. He was looking for some goodies. I wonder if he came across anything. SWL 32. SWL 33, myself, and uh, Bozo Control, and all the jingle singers, and Mr. Announcer. Yeah. There's the honking proboscis. What's left of it anyway? SWL 34. Short late wave listener 35, Mr. Bill, who, for, for those of you, who, and he's on our archives too, for those of you who've been listening in to the old Tuberty Network for a while, would would hear the mighty signal of uh, Mr. Bill, usually transmitting from out in the shop. And he is now in Cheyenne, Wyoming, where he's saying hello from sunny Cheyenne, or at least it was, I'm trying to think. The gray line's gone by there. Probably nice to maybe have some of the snow and things melting away. Thanks, Mr. Bill, for waving a hand to us here. In the Central Valley, it was good to hear you actually on my receiver when you came through a couple weeks ago. Hope we'll be able to do that again sometime. Let's see if we've got SWL 36. I know this guy's out there. SWL 37. Uh, 37 here, Dennis, and good evening. Good evening. As the sun is still, you can see behind me, the floor and fauna, 14 minutes after the 8 o'clock hour Pacific Daylight Time, and it ain't done yet, right? Until the middle of June. So come up three more weeks of increasing daylight. Wonder what that will do for our skip conditions. Uh, thanks, Chris. SWL 39. SWL 40. SWL 39. I see uh, Butterbean has made the transition from the old radio 
night to the old tube radio night. Hello there from northeast Georgia. SWL next is SWL 41. SWL 42. Got a note here to get in the big trio, which I will do. So we got 42. SWL 43. Might actually be hearing some static crashes. We were having the EAS, uh, what do they call it, flood warnings. And that's up in the Sierra Nevada, where we have the giant, the big thunderhead clouds, pour a lot of rain and a lot of hail up in the uh, foothills and areas like that. So. Your static crashes, that's probably where they are from tonight. D did I hear 43 over? Maybe I didn't hear 43. Sometimes my receiver is not the best. SWL 44, that's Raymond in Utah. I don't see Utah on this evening just yet. Let's try uh, up in North Fork, Paul and Kelly, SWL 45. Sounded good. I don't know how you all receive, but you sure sound good. And it's 45. My receive is not bad. You are, what do they say, nine pounds? How would OBP do it? Nine pounds, good modulation at Chestnut and Herndon. And we've got you checked in. And I see you, Jeff, on the video side. Good luck on installing. I think you were going to install some extra, um, what do we call it, extra smoke in the mobile device. Hope that is going well. It's not as easy as it looks sometimes, but we're going to get you, you checked in and be interested to hear the mobile when we do it. SWL 46. Shortwave listener 47. I keep hearing something way out there. I wonder if we have some skip trying to come in. SWL 48. Here's a relay or any check in for the station. Uh, relay it to the old tube radio network. SWL 49, SWL 50, SWL 51. Uh, 51 checking in. 51 checking in. All right, Dave, got you checked in here. On the roll call, we have page two if you're playing the home game. There it is. Should look like something like something like that. And what did I want to say? Um, well, I'll, I'll say SWL 52. And just a reminder that this is the old tube radio network, real radios glowing in the dark, the tube radios, vintage radios from 1958 to 1978. And about after the roll call here in about 15 minutes, we will be calling for those radios to stop by. Check out microphones, peek and tweak, give us a call, see what we can get on the old tube radio list tonight. I know many of you listening, wherever you are, have old radios as well, and hopefully you were able to get them fired up this week. If you're on one of the the video side or the audio side and you can you can check in and you fired up a radio this week, let us know what you were you were transmitting on. Be interested to know. SWL fifty three. Also, we've got a lot of knowledgeable, knowledgeable people that are listening in that will help us with our questions, answer some questions. So I always, that's why I like the old Tube Radio Network, I always end up learning something. Page four, we are looking for SWL 54. I thought I heard him testing earlier this evening. SWL 55. 55, checking in. Sounding good here in Midtown, in the Flatlands. Thanks for checking in. Thank you, Dennis. 54 here, Dennis. Hey, there you are. I thought I heard you testing earlier, so I figured the radio room was up and running. And you had the uh, coax switch switched into the antennas. You are sounding good, Larry. We've got you checked in over, over. Hey, Roger. Yeah, I'm not going to be out here to check in any more radios tonight, so... Uh... I'll catch you next Saturday, for sure. All right, the one you're on now sounds good. What What are you transmitting on? Over. Uh, Mark three. All right, I'm making a note, and we'll add that into the mix. I like the way you've got it set. Not overdone on the audio. 
The ping is just enough so you know it's a browning, and of course, putting a good signal here into the old tube radio network. Thanks, Larry, and we'll get you uh, checked in both ways. And from the land of sky blue waters, or something like that, where, what was it today? I think it was the Simpson Avenue Big Yard Sale SWL 56. Good evening, Dennis and the Net. 56, just for kicks. And yeah, there's been quite a bit of activity in the, uh, in the region. Yeah, probably hard to park or grab your parking space while you can. I ended up doing a very long walk yesterday and came through the neighborhood over there by the gazebo gardens where they, they, they have a lot of activity there on Friday nights, live bands and things like that. So it's hopping, hopping in, in the old fig area. Um, what are we doing? A, B, 6, N, I. Gonna, is going to try 10 meter AM. I heard some guys talking about 10 meter AM on one of the AM Facebook pages. So... We're waiting for some things to go up, going on. Usually we need to have that sunspot numbers up in the double digits for 10 a.m. to open. But we're ready to pounce up there in the 2900 to 29100 a.m. window or anywhere you can get a, a signal in for sure. Let's see if we've got SWL 58. Oh, proxy here, man. He's... Uh... He's uh, at some kind of event tonight. I think it's a Mary Kay event. event. Yeah, he got he got tired of, of driving around the pink Pinto. I think if he, if he sells a, a, a couple more dozen cases of hand cream, he'll get that that pink Cadillac. But he's you know he's kind of a celebrity. He has to sign autographs. You, you, I, I don't know. I don't know how it is. You probably don't know how it is, but. Sometimes that's just what you got to do. We got a proxy chicken for uh, Jeremy. If he stops by live and direct, we'll put the X in the square. How about SWL 59? Shortwave listener 60. Uh, evening time to you, Dennis. Don't run it. Uh, Ken sends uh, his regards. I called him uh, the other day, and he sends uh, all his regards to all the guys uh, for sure. Okay, buddy, let's check in this. Uh, 2527, the DX. Uh, we can do that. You know what I'm going to do? We've been looking at me way, way too long here. Let's switch over to the S meter so people can give themselves a radio check if they want to. SWL60 at the microphone. Thank you, Joe. And we're checking in the 2 uh, or 1 radio. Sounding good as always. Thanks. Okay, buddy. Over to SWL61. Sounding good as always, Dino. We got you checked in on the old tube radio network. Thanks for listening. Thank you, sir. SWL 62. Good time, David. This is 62. Checking in from downtown Clovis. Beautiful downtown Clovis, a city of, I don't know what the population is now. It's 120,000. Is it up that much? When I, when I first came to the Central Valley, it was 30,000 people there. And when you drove down Shaw Avenue and you passed Clovis Avenue, it went down to a two-lane road, one, one way on each side. I'm sure you remember that. You are sounding good, sir, and we've got you checked in. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah, I remember those days, too. See you next week. Showing our age here. And I, I'm a young guy. I'm a young guy compared to uh, Lucky Lindy there. That's, that's why they call him Lucky. <laughs> Let's see, next we've got SWL 63. And that is, do we have the New York State? I don't think I saw any any of our New York stations on yet tonight. So I'll hang off on, on 63. How about on the video side? Anybody from New York? Raise your hand. We'll get, to get you checked in. Next is SWL 64. Shortwave listener, 65. 65, checking in. Live and direct, 65. Thanks, Eric. Got you checked in here. And uh, John listening in from Spokane, hoping for Skip tonight. That has been, in, in 2019, I think that's been our number one Skip hop 
up there from Spokane down in when we start getting the e-skip. So could could be pretty good. And then uh, f- closely followed by our Colorado stations that often say we're we're sneaking into the to the S meter up there. So hopefully we'll we'll see what we can do. Next is SWL 66. SWL 67. SWL 68. And uh, check in. We heard from what Kenny's up to. SWL 69. Also, the mighty X4000. You know, I can actually do this. Let's see. I think I've got a setup. Checking in. X4000. All right. If those those over the 11 meter two way didn't get the full issue of that, but if you listen in on the replay, I'll see what was happening on that one. Where are we going? SWL 70. Hello, Dennis. Thanks for checking me in. And thanks, thanks for allowing me to check you in up there in where are you at? In Morgan Canyon. Do you get any of the, the well, uh, you're you're in the wrong spot, I think. When we have the big, it's it's lots of flooding, and, and you don't get flooding. You don't get the big rainstorms. You don't get the golf ball size hail, do you? Uh, sorry, I was being distracted. You're asking me what about the hail? I said w- when we have those ES reports that there's going to be the golf ball size hail. You're you're too far away from that, right? You're not far enough up there. No, you know, I heard that yesterday when I was in town. I guess it was down north of northeast of Tulare or something. But uh, no, we got nothing up here. Yeah, it's the people under the big, big clouds. So that's good. That's a good thing. You already, you already paid your dues already with the wind. So thanks for checking in. Yeah, I did. Thanks, Dennis. Then we head over to one of our old tube radio operators, Deluxe. Dallas, Georgia, who was around when these things were new in the box. Hello, Stan. See you waving a hand, uh, checking in here to the old Tube Radio Network tonight. Hopefully we'll grab some of your favorite radios here as we check them in coming up in hopefully about less than 10 minutes. SWL 72. SWL 73. Hello to our stations tuning in, listening in. The old Tube Radio Network here in Central California. We're on channel 1127085 and beaconing on the live streams to now Delaware, South Carolina, and somewhere near Canby, Oregon. Looking for SWL 74. SWL 75. Checked in as double zero. Is he still around? SWL 77. Yes, sir. 77 checking in. Uh, old Dennis the Menace here in the Tower of Power in the Tower District. Waving a hand to all the listeners in 73. And as you can see there, putting my S meter at uh, 25 over, which is a pretty darn good signal for this, this bucket of bolts. Next, we've got SWL 79. Plug it in. Well, there he is. I was hoping we could put an X in your square, and indeed we did. Thanks, sir. X double X X W L. Yeah, S W L eighty. And over to page four, S W L eighty one. Eighty one, checking in. Good evening, time to you. Good evening, time. Sounding good. Whatever radio you've chosen tonight is making the trip fine business. Oh, that's a good deal. Uh, I got an announcement to make. Uh, that uh, block sale that you mentioned, uh, I think it was last week, uh, that is Father's Day weekend, the sweet Adeline block sale on Adeline Street uh, between Clinton and Shields. And that's on Father's Day weekend. It'll be on Sunday, the day after Father's Day. Hopefully, I'll see some of you out there, and I'll have some old tubes and tube radios and related uh, cigar out there for sale. Uh, come on by, 
check it out. We, uh, will do. And Adeline is between, I'm thinking here, Palm and Fruit. Yeah, that's right. I didn't mention that. Yeah, it's between Palm and Fruit and um, uh, between Clinton and Shield. Uh, 2912 is the address. 2912 Adeline. There you go. Coming up the uh, Father's Day weekend Sunday. Is it Saturday and Sunday or just Sunday? Just Sunday. And I, I've got an appointment that afternoon. So um, uh, I'll probably roll it up about noon. So hopefully I'll see some, some of you out there before noon. All right. Don't dilly-dally. Get there, get there early. It'll probably be, be kind of warm anyway, so you'll want to do that on the Adeline Hill in that area. And I think that we have another, yeah, we got another weekend to uh, talk about it. I think I picked up some stuff and got some tubes there a while, a while back. And like uh, Mr. Unicorn said, he will have some radio items of interest. So it should be fun. Thanks, Steve, for checking in. Next, we go to SWL 82. 82 checking in from the ditch banks of Biola, and on the way to hand to Rob, uh, N0RU, over there in Colorado. Now, you guys have that 10-meter pipeline going on. We just can't seem to get it here on a Saturday evening. And I'm sure a lot of us who can run multiple bands will be chatting with each other as the sunspots open up. It should be uh, fun. Maybe, well, like I said, we'll get some 10-meter AM going. Get our own, get our own uh, hole in the ozone here from Central California to who knows where. Sounding good, Ron. Thanks for checking in. Thanks, Dennis. Next, we've got SWL 84. How's Reedley Town doing tonight? SWL 85. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, proxy in 84 and his girls, please. Uh, sure thing. Good to Jerry and all the ladies in on the list. Thanks. We got Tandy Girl and Snowy Owl and Mountain Maid over to SWL 89. SWL 90 is checked in. SWL 92. Okay, I still hear something way out there, but I don't think that I don't think that's Chuck. I usually hear Madera Town a little bit better than that. How about SWL 93? SWL 98. Ninety-eight Fresno Dave, five forty-four. We used to kind of wait for the the skip to come out of Monterey <laughs> or the backscatter, but uh, don't have to do that now. Sounding good, sir. Got you checked in. All right, thank you. And then, uh, Mr. Cheesy E Z Cheesy E Jeff, one hundred three, waving a hand from the video side, getting his uh, radio back in the vehicle. It sounds like he's going to be. What's all the old expressions? 10-8, 10-2, walking the dog, wall to wall. Looks like you're going to have a pretty neat setup when it totally gets in there, installed. Look forward to hearing that. Got you checked in, Jeff. Over to SWL 109. SWL uh, 110. SWL 111. And I want to um, just recheck in SWL 21. I knew JT was on his way because he was in the air chair tonight at old radio night. But as he often does, since he has such this, this great station, he pokes a hole in the ozone layer and the skip land just kind of dumps down on his ground rod and affiliated component parts there. And so he had to let things cool down a bit like a nuclear reactor. I want to let things overheat. That would be bad. And now that things are cooled down, he's listening at oldtuberadio.net. He's waving a hand to all the SWLs. Thanks, JT. And 
as I mentioned earlier, I never never had a Cobra 2000. I don't think I ever knew anybody stationed that had one. I'm sure a lot of a lot of people do, but I guess if you miss the the tube radio area, that's era. That's the that is the big base station to have, and he featured one tonight, as he always does on his radios. And it looked pretty pretty nifty to to coin a word. Let's go over to Wayne is hanging out. SWL, he's waiting for me to call this number. SWL 114. 114, checking in on a Cobra 2000 that you're talking about. <laughs> no wonder you sound so good. I was watching the Cobra 2000 on the video. As That is just a beautiful, nice radio. And uh, it, it, you just explained a lot with that one. Thanks. Thank you for checking. We will head over to SWL 128, John Lee out of Fairfax, Virginia. And I'm scrolling down. Did I see 128 yet? I don't think so. I believe the weather is good out that way. So when he gets a chance to be in the radio room, no doubt we will get him checked in. Let's try a little closer to home, SWL 131. Break OTR. The break OTR, go ahead, please. Uh, yes, a cross band check in, two meters, uh, number 27. Great, thank you. Thank you for listening over there. And I bet, you know, I've got a little HT on the table. I bet if I had that on, I would hear Dwayne because he's close enough. But there would be a lot of people I would not hear, so. Thanks for the two-meter ears. Dwayne, if you are cross-band listening, 27 is checked in, thanks to Ed and yourself. So where are we going? Let's try SWL 133. Good evening, Dennis. 133 is checking in. Checking in and checked in when I check the box here. There it goes. Thank you, Dave, for tuning in that Saturday night place to be. Over to SWL 135. Got a proxy check-in for Cliff, as well as SWL 137. The radios are coming right up, so don't go away. SWL 145. 145 checking in. Wish I had a big radio. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah, I've got I've got the budget model. I'm I'm looking at one of those Cobra 1999s. Not not quite a 2000, but at least it'll get you get you on the air. Wh whatever you got sounds good, Tony. Uh, if you could ever get a chance to listen to the replay, audio or video, you will be pleased with how things come here into uh, Midtown Fresno. Thanks for checking in. All right, thank you, Dennis. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'm planning on not wrecking it, but sometimes it, it, it's easy It's easy for things to, to go astray. Uh, SWL 147, that's Neil out in Kakalak. He's checking in. About 30 minutes ago, he said it was 11 o'clock. Yeah, right, right at the start of the net. Uh, and the skip is still rolling in on AM and LSB. Now, we're not, I don't know if we're going to get that kind of e-skip conditions tonight or not. And so he's going to check us a little later while he's doing the ratchet jaw. Yeah, if the skip is in, by all means, keep the frequency warmed up. We're hoping to do that tonight. We've got some stations waiting out of uh, Colorado and Oregon and Washington, hoping to uh, check us out. Let's let's try course goal. Don't need skip conditions for course goal. That's WL195. 195, check it in, Dennis. Good evening, and sounding good here on the roll call tonight. Thanks for checking in. Yes, sir. SWL226. 226. Anybody I missed needs to get Get checked in here. OTR listening. Well, I'll tell you what. I've got a setup for the tube radios coming up in, in moments, so give me a, a about 79 seconds or so, whatever it takes, to switch a whole bunch of stuff over, and we will be back shortly, That we being the old tube radio network, 
And when we do come back, we will try to do what we do best, and that is talk to and talk with those glow-in-the-dark radios coming up from the collections here around the Central Valley and maybe elsewhere if we can get some skip conditions. Back in a moment. Well, I hear a, a break OTR that is way out there. I will put on my listening headphoniums and see what we can do. This is the old tube radio network over. Almost sounds like that mechanic speed. Yeah, it could be it's right it's right in my noise level. Could be could be six five oh waving a hand. I'll be right back. I'm switching over to the tube radio side. Hey, Rich, you got a copy on Unicorn? Yeah, I'll go ahead and proxy you in. Uh, he can't hear you, but I, I barely got you there. All right, back in the control room, and uh, thanks, Steve. I heard that you've got you've got some decent equipment there. The pull out the uh, pull off the station. I do have trouble from this location and being low. I have trouble when I head up to certain areas up the hill. Let me also, before we get started with the tubes, say hello to uh, Robert and Teresa SWL31 uh, checking in from the clandestine location, one of our unknown SWLs. We always thought it was the people wearing the bags over their head, but sometimes it just happens that way. And uh, he, I think he's checking out the Leighton, the, the Leighton ham, hamvention. All right, I'm going to say, now that we are here, hello, hello everybody, the old Tube Radio Network. If you're tuning in for the Tube Radios, this is, this is a good time to do that because I'm gonna say OTR's standing by Looking for radio number one. 81. And there is uh, 81. Hello, Steve. Over. Well, I thought that was uh, probably appropriate since this radio used to belong to number one. And uh, so it's the first radio of the evening. And uh, the legacy lives on. Dr. J's uh, gift to me, a general radio telephone, MC4. Uh, so one that uh, kind of... Uh, kind of went to sleep on us last week, but um, did a little tweak and peek in and changed a couple of tubes, and uh, looks like we're back on the air. You are back on the air in fine style. Uh, good signal. The audio is excellent. Um, if I've got the camera set up here, and I'm not sh sure that I do, I'm going to f change the video, which is a good thing. They don't have to look at me, and what will come up next is a picture of an MC4. I think this is from Paul's collection, but everybody can get an idea of what they were doing in uh, beautiful downtown Burbank, California back in 1961. And if you had $200, you could get this 22-channel variable receive four-channel fixed crystal radio 
with six crystals. I guess there was a socket in there, and I don't think it, it doesn't say anything about having the Civil Air Patrol, but give us a transmission, and it uh, sounds like you've got the receive and the transmit both. I don't know if you're using crystal control for both, or if you're, you're catching me on the, the VFO, but sounding good, over. Uh, well, I tried both, the VFO and the crystal receive, and uh, they both work really well. Um, I really can't tell much uh, difference from one to the other. And yes, it does have the extra crystal socket, um, external crystal socket, uh, variable receive, uh, crystal receive, uh, the tone signal, the spotter switch. Everything works. You know, last week nothing worked. It kind of kind of quit working in midstream. The, none of the knobs would work. Everything's working now. It's, it's just coming back to life and it's doing a good job. Boy, I'll say. In fact, I'll give you a we'll do a zero beat frequency check on the next transmission. Like like day and night. You will if you listen to the archives, you will be pleased with how the radio sounds. The audio is just crystal clear. So I'd be curious to know what you're doing for uh, the microphonium. That radio had the capability of going six volt DC, twelve volt DC, 100, 115 volt AC. I'm assuming it was how you what kind of power cord you had in the back. A schematic is available at oldtuberadio.com, the general radio telephone MC4. And back to you, sir, and I'll uh, fiddle some knobs here, see where you land on the 2708-something. Okay, I have... It is. Got a nice photo there from Paul. And I agree with you about uh, about Jim there. He was a very generous fellow. The, having a um, transformer, though, is not the thing you want to go bad in, in any radio. Sometimes they are, they are unobtainium. But you can hear the... I've got the windows open here. You can hear... I think that's the police helicopter... Out, out circling around, probably looking for... Uh, I, I've contracted with them so they can... If they find anybody with an old tube radio, to tell them to get on the air. Frequency-wise, you are at 2704.9. So you're right on frequency. When I flipped, Everybody heard when I flipped to the upper sideband. I guess it was where I went. Uh, you were right there. So uh, you've, you've got the right uh, crystal. I think, don't those use some weird mixing... I don't think it's a 27085 crystal. It's some weird mixing thing. So whatever you got, it's working good. And that's good to know. I don't have my frequency counter hooked up to it. Uh, so I appreciate that. And uh, I'm not going to worry about it then. I, I mean, that's pretty close. So uh, I guess that's, like you said, dead on. I, I appreciate the check-in. I hope to see everybody out there at the yard sale. Uh, Father's Day weekend, 2912 North Adeline, between fruit and palm and between... And thanks for the airtime, OTR. I'm out listening. And thanks for your time to check in a radio here. I know uh, a lot of a lot of people out there on Saturday evenings have family things going on and a lot of stuff. So when our, our radio operators get a chance to actually stop by into the radio room and take the time to fire up the radios, we really do uh, appreciate it. Radio number one at 845 on the list, the General Radio Telephone MC4 from 1961, sounding good here in the 21st century, 2019. I have not recognized the Jingle Singers yet, and I will do that. And then we will be back with your radio check-ins. Over to Studio B, Mr. Announcer and our 
exclusive, a copyrighted feature of the old Tube Radio Network. Oh, and I don't hear them. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on, we're going to start again. I have to... They changed... I forgot, they've changed microphones. Let me, let me try this. I think... Okay, you know what? I, I talked... They, they were transmitting on the... We have a split feed going on. So they were transmitting on the radio side, but apparently not on the digital side. So let's try that that again. So you get a, a get a replay replay on the 27.085 and maybe at oldtuberdio.net you will be able to hear them this time. We'll see what happens. How do you do? Ladies and gentlemen, greetings to you wherever you are. For music and the latest news from home and from afar, the station for you is OTR. Old Tube Radio. The station for you is OTR. And it just goes to prove the point that the most technical difficulties that you will hear during the old tube radio network are generated right out of here, out of net control. Because <laughs> the radios often work flawlessly. Looking for radio number two. Hello, Paul, SWL45. Just to remind you, you don't have to have any special numbers or have ever checked in any time, anywhere in the old Tube Radio Network. But if you find yourself in front of or in possession of a Tube Radio and you are within the RFDX zone, give us a call here on Saturday nights. Just like Paul did, break OTR, and we'll chat with you and find out what you're doing and what kind of radio you have. Hello, Paul. Okay, Dennis. This is, I believe, my favorite raven. It's a browning lab, and it's a browning raven. It's a mobile unit. All right, from Browning Laboratories, a.k.a. your Golden Eagle, this is a mobile version of something, and this is made by Browning. I think they may have had some that were subcontracted out. Let me get it on the video here. Get it lined up and we will talk about that. Kind of a, to, to coin a phrase, a rare bird. I think it actually is, is one of the birds. It's a eagle, like an R27, S23 parts, parts and pieces, but put in a mobile configuration. It sound good, Paul. Give us another transmission. Okay. Yeah, it's a real nice mobile, I'll tell you that for sure. Bounty did an excellent job on the thing. First of all, I'll just give you a rundown of what it looks like. It's covered with black leather grain vinyl. That's all over the radio as far as the back part of it goes. And the knobs are black with brush aluminum inserts in the thing. It's just really an attractive radio for a mobile. I think it's real fancy. But it's definitely a mobile. Back to you. We've got a picture. It, it has got the biggest S meter for mobile radio I think I've ever seen. The channel selector is an is a different story. So if you were if you're a mobile operator that likes to likes to give out signal reports, this is the radio for for you. Also, I would I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. One, we're showing the stock microphone that what appears to be the unamplified stock microphone. So I'll ask you maybe which microphone you're running, and also about the power supply. If it had some separate power supply that Browning made for it, or do you have a standard like an Astron 20 app, how are you getting that thing to power up on the DC mode over? Yeah, that's the, that's the interesting part on these radios. As far as the microphone, it's a stock microphone. came with a radio and everything. It's a manufactured ceramic microphone made by Sure Brothers. And it's got BL right on the front of the microphone, on the stamp on the thing. So it's definitely a legit microphone. It's a real small microphone. That picture kind of is, looks like the color of it, but with it sitting in front of the radio like that, it makes it look larger. It's, it's not a really large microphone, but it fits the radio just fine. <laughs> Back to you. Yeah, it's good audio. That's very nice audio for, you know, normally we're used to hearing 
Browning chassis with the D104, the banana mic, but that style of microphone is getting quite nice. Lots of audio. 1965 is when this came out, so it came out concurrently with the R20, uh, S23, R27, the Eagle. I'm trying to think if I'm going to get a shot. There we go. But I can't. Um, I may switch the picture over here. And then you can see that Browning actually uh, advertised this radio at the same time. It's not going to play very well on, on the video side, but I'll, I'll, I'll do my best here. They, There it is. The Raven. It's called Birds of a Feather. The Raven and the Eagle. So I think their their hope was after you paid the three fifty for the the base, then you still needed a unit one and a unit two, and you would get a Raven mobile to go with it. And if you did, you would have made a good choice because look how good it sounds here in two thousand nineteen. And back to you, Paul, for another transmission. Okay, I don't want to forget about the power supply for this thing. You, they recommend, that's what they say, when you turn it on, you do not turn it off by your off and on switch. You turn it off by the power supply. So it's a very large power supply, just a big transformer, not in there, with equipped the wires and everything and the relay in there to make it work this way. It's, it's quite a unique thing. You know, you wouldn't want to put this in your car, I'll tell you that. That transformer weighs almost as much as that radio. That radio's got 12 tubes in it, too, by the way. It's it's crammed into a very, very small, small radio, very nice looking radio, but they got 12 tubes in it. So they do the job. It's, it's hard to tell from the photo, but it doesn't look like the radio is very tall. So are you, do you know, are the tubes mounted horizontally? Are some of them mounted horizontally? Or are they all standing up vertically? Oh, they're all standing up. They're all vertical, crammed in there, and they're close. It's a lot of heat come out, but they got it well ventilated, so it's taking care of it all right. No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's really, a, really a fun radio to have and look at. Back to you. Yeah, I would say, just a large S-meter. One more question. I see what looks like on the other side of the S-meter. Is that an Eagle logo? I just, I don't have a way to zoom in. There's some type of icon or logo-esque thing. There's also a red button, or is that a LED, red panel light on the side of the S-meter? I'm, I'm thinking maybe that's your on the air. Could be something different. I don't know. We'll go back to you. Over. Yeah, my own air light's flashing real good. And the needle's dropping real good on this brownie. It's a beautiful brownie in my, uh, meter on the thing. It's a large one. Leave it to brownie to decide, I'll tell you. Back to you. All right, switched over. Speaking of meters, switched to the S meter. You're almost S9, so that's, that's putting out all of at least its 4 watt output. And sounding good here at the old tube radio network tonight. Talking with Paul from his collection, the Browning Raven, the mobile version that came out when the Browning Eagle, the original Eagle, came out. Running the stock microphone and on the uh, power supply. And you managed to peek into that little tiny channel selector and uh, dial in uh, channel 11. So uh, for you, Paul, uh, give us another transmission and thank you for bringing this one by over. Okay, you don't want to check my frequency. This thing is dead on, I believe. No, <laughs> it's not necessary. I'm legal with FCC on the thing. But this thing has got an unbelievable channel rejection, addition channel rejection, 80 dB down. Well, I'll tell you what, that's pretty great, especially in a mobile. That's not it. Thanks for checking it in. Thanks for bringing it by. What we like to do and uh, maybe do here best on the old Tube Radio Network. And that is a talk with our Tube Radio operators who take time and share their collections with us here on channel 112785 out of the Central Valley of California where we're waiting maybe for some e-skip to show up so we can talk to some of our listeners are out there. Let's see, new, new in town, Southern California. Hello to you out in Manhattan Beach. And I'm going to get a check-in for SWL44. Mr. Ray out there in 
Utah, who has uh, checked in or made it into the radio room. Also, uh, Michael, SWL13, as promised. Checking into the old tube radio network. Top of the hour, 9 o'clock. The Jingle Singers will try it once again, see if we can get it right the first time. And then after that, we will be looking for radio number three. How do you do? Ladies and gentlemen, greetings to you. Wherever you are, your favorite spot on the dial by far is known to you. And O-T-R, the old tube radio network. The station for you is O-T-R. Break, O-T-R. The uh, break, O-T-R, go ahead, please. Before you get to next radio, it's, uh, you still have page three somewhere sitting around there. Uh, 58, I'd like to do an extremely late check-in if that is allowed, Dennis. I will do that. I actually have the SWL chart on the computer in front of me here. because I just checked in two, so we'll make it a triple play. <clears throat> and for those playing the home game, we'll go over to... Um, 58, put the X in the square. You are back from the the uh, autograph signing, and all those things that a celebrity like yourself has to do, and we appreciate that you, you, you humbled yourself to jump in on Channel 11 and check in. That's a good thing. Oh, boy, I don't know about all that. I, my neighbor must have really been talking me up there or something. <laughs> Anyways, appreciate that. Thank you. You have a good evening. We are looking forward to checking in a lot of radios. So far, we've got the General Radio Telephone MC4 back from 1961 and 1965. The Browning Raven, we're looking for radio number three. This is the old tube radio network looking for radio three. What happens when we get those nice pre-summer 85 degree days when the sun goes down, temperature is still in the high 70s, the barbecue and the swimming pool stay open late. There are a couple of stations that do check in from from the patio and the pool side, so we'll see how that goes. I don't have mine hooked back up yet. Well, that's okay, because we'll be here next week. 
There's a lot of things I don't have hooked up over here. EM just changed antennas and feed line. I hear you say it was a... Let's, let's talk antennas for a bit, since that's interesting to everybody. Even me... And you gave a number out, and I, I checked it, and it looked like a vertical with a whole bunch of, I want to say, little radial items on it. Uh, yes, the Ciro 2016. Uh, it's got a little, like, egg beater on top, and uh, 16 radials on the bottom, and uh, also a large coil. Yeah, I saw the coil. It looks like they make a version. It's got a different name, but it doesn't have the multiple radials i'm thinking about mounting something in a tree and i thought well that might work because anytime anything's sticking out of the bottom that creates an issue depending on where you mount it and th that is not a fiberglass antenna is that correct that is correct the uh, imax that i had up there was oh my god uh, even with gloves on the fiberglass was just going everywhere yeah i'm kind of looking a replacement for mine that met a windstorm early demise and in talking with people they seem to say that if you can get out of the fiberglass you might have a little bit better or less noise on the receive and things like that the the radials and i know you may not know exact numbers here they look smaller that smaller than what does that mean they're smaller than like a quarter wave so I'm thinking they, they don't stick out three feet or four feet. It seems like they're smaller than that. Oh, yeah. They're uh, not even two feet. What is it, uh, 700 millimeters? Oh, so they're they're very small. Okay, I wonder if that's just making a small little ground plane on the bottom because there's a lot of them and they're small. All right. Well, that's, that's not bad. Maybe that would work up in a tree. It's sounding good if you're using it right now. Uh, yes, I am using it right now. It's very broadbanded, and with the antenna tuner, uh, I can do 10, 11, 12, 15, 17, 20, 40. Wow, all right. Well, that's, that's similar to the IMAX. The IMAX is really poor on 20, but it seems like 17, 12, 10, 11, you can do okay. And you know what also works on 20, on, on 40, is the Stardust here, because it's just a quarter wave up and down, but... 40 is an interesting band when you realize a lot of people talk mobile on the NVIS and at best you're using a 102 inch whip so uh, that's good. I imagine you have some horrendous bandwidth or you have to use a tuner but you know in, in a daytime NVIS on 40 meters probably would uh, do the job. Yeah, it works quite well actually. Uh, I was just goofing around with it and uh all of a sudden, a guy in Utah came back and was talking to me, and uh, I couldn't believe I was working on uh, a 11-meter antenna. Well, there you go. Well, it was electrically or mechanically or physically maybe an 11-meter antenna, but who knows. Again, we're having the weird audio things going on. Anybody's listening on the digital side, so I have to keep adjusting things. My apologies if we have equal container audio but i'm trying to keep an keep an eye on it that's the ie chrome whatever it is that seems to have problems either with video or audio when you do the streaming stuff so hopefully it's not too bad but if you're 27085 it's probably sounding marvelous all right it's uh, sounding good and when i when i checked it i said that might be that might be the one i actually need if i ever do this tree thing the one that doesn't have the radials on it but now that those are pretty small maybe that that'll work as well. It looks like a, a well-built, simple design that should work and does work and work well. Thanks. Uh, no problem. Yeah, uh, they did a real good job. Quality control is really good. Uh, very nice antenna. And you are listening to the old Tube Radio Network. Something that happens every, most every Saturday of the year on this channel, 27085, channel 11. Out of Central California, a lot of radio operators and radio collectors 
come together and continue what we did back in the mid-80s when we would escape from whatever channel we might be on and all the noise back in the day, whatever that phrase means, hop down to channel 11 to decompress and, and talk about and talk on our tube radios, like driving the old cars to the hamburger shop, I guess, and kicking the tires. We are still doing that here in 2019, and a lot of the stations have been with us for most of that time. So it's uh, it's been fun. Looking for radio number three tonight. And like a good day fishing, sometimes you drop out the line and you get immediately get a bite. I think we've we've got Radio 3. Hello, 45. Yeah. Hi, Dennis. I guess you know what I got on this thing. This is my Brown Eagle R-27 S-23 Series 2. I'll call up a shot of that. Yeah, it had, it had a long enough ping that I suspected that it wasn't the buddy bass, which can also get a little bit of snap ping on the front. And this is this is a good radio t- to pull in because this is the bass version that came out uh, about the same time as the Raven. I think I've got a shot. No image available. How can that be? Okay, here's what I'll do. I will uh, pull up a shot. Uh, I think this is from Joe's collection. And it includes the the 180 uh, amplifier, which I don't think you're running. But go ahead and give us a, a transmission. I'll get the uh, video up here. I know you come into it. Oh, you got a picture right there. Yeah, that'll work. They got a little extra piece of that one, but that'll work. Back to you. Yeah, the piece being... Get a get it in the frame here. I can say all the technical difficulties that usually happen come out of net control. It doesn't have you don't have the business band amplifier, but you've got the receiver and the transmitter. It's a, it's interesting. That's a, a pretty big size radio transmitter and receiver, and they managed to, like you said, smash it all down into the receiver or, or into the uh, Raven to make it a transceiver. Of course, they probably maybe left out a few things, but sounding good. The audio is nice. The signal is great. I'll see if I can compare your signal to the Raven. and uh, Come back. Okay. Now, this thing, it's a large radio. It's 25-inch wide, both when they're tied together. Actually, two radios, what it is. Transmitter and a receiver. It's 10-inch uh, deep, 6.5-inch tall. So it's, it's big enough to handle the tubes and everything. It got, it got quite a few more than the Raven does, but it's up there pretty close. It's 11 tube with five transmits, so it'd be 16 tubes total. It's, it's just an old radio. It's brown in and I'll draw it on the night just because it's a match to my Raven. I don't know whether it's ever been matched up before, but it is now. Back to you. Sounds good. They sold a lot of those. You're uh, looking at the S-meter. Your modulated signal is about the same signal strength as the Raven. This one has a little bit more forward modulation, so the resting carrier is a little bit less, but it's also it's also a little bit louder. And I'm sure that's probably because of the microphone you're using, but the, the radio is, is tuned up perfectly, and it's got some nice uh, headroom on the audio. So we're working quite nicely. And it would make a great pair, a great pair up for the base to unit one if you're using it with, with the uh, Raven over. Yeah, the microphone doesn't stand a chance, though, against that old stalker. But this is one of my favorite mics, my Turner Plus 3 microphone. The radio likes it better. i got a stock mic for it, one of the banana type mics, but it doesn't like it too well. So I run this one with it. It seems to like it better. At least it's loud enough. The other one wasn't really loud. It's, uh, it's just got a lot of good things on the thing. Like I said, it's uh, changed up quite a bit from the earlier ones. It looked the same, but they had a Series 2, which was mine. And it had a, mine has a 5763 final and a 6BQ5 modulator. And the other one was a little weaker on the thing, so it does help out some. It's, uh, like I said, it's a typical variety. <laughs> Back to you, Dennis. 
Sounds good. The uh, good production run from them, 1964 to 1966, somewhere in between that time they came out with The Raven, which was, I think, in the $270 range. This was $359. The Browning Eagle, the first of the Eagle series, and you said yours was a Series 2 base station, which was the R27, as you said, and the S23. Some differences in the transmitter, which you talked about, and physically on the unit, there were larger larger meters. There was a neon modulation indicator, and the lighted on the air indicator. So when you key, key down on that thing, you should see somewhere it says on the air. You bet. On the right hand side, it's good size too. <laughs> Most everything on this is pretty good size. I think the meters are larger than the old ones were. So, no, that's it. It's going right now. Very nice. And then down to the left of that, there's a uh, the head of that. That's not an eagle, but it's a brown, what do you call a logo, to the left of the on the air light. Neat logo. Anyway, that's about it. Back to you. Yeah, prior to the Golden Eagle series, and I guess the uh, Flying Eagle applique. Looking good. Radio number three is <clears throat> Paul on his Browning Eagle, the R27 S23, the Series 2 coming out uh, probably in the, the latter part of the run, 1965 or 66. It sounds very nice. looks good on the meter. And you, you'll be able to hear it on the archives when you do, and you will, will uh, like what it is. Thanks for uh, giving us radio number three tonight. Over. Yeah, thanks for checking it in, Dennis. Hope things pick up. They were sure going last week. They'll, they'll come in, hopefully. Take care. Yeah, we got a super nice evening outside, so I'm sure a lot of people are spending overtime outdoors, which is a good thing. And I thought we might get some e-skip. It has that feel in the air. I'm listening to the receive. It seems like it wants to wants to break through. Usually we'll know the guys on 38 lower will pop down and say they're making some contacts. Or we can go up and see if there's any 10-meter beacons coming through. Sometimes the beacons come through before you know the band is open. Uh, OTR is standing by. Listening for Radio Four jingle singers are saying they are ready, so uh, let's head over to Studio B. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? Greetings to you, wherever you are. The friendliest station for you by far is known to all as OTR, the old tube radio network. The station for you is OTR. Thirty-seven. I take it the station for you also is OTR. You got me? Uh, yes, over. Oh, okay, I got 37 here. All right, SWL 37 here. We're going to check in my uh, pretty blue radio. I am checking in my G Power Mate Jim Marine Products. It's a 23 channel tube that glows in the dark. And we are running this to here with the amplified D104 lollipop. Radio 4, the Jim Marine. Sounds good. Now, how do you decide when you jump into the radio room which radio is going to get top billing or which radio is going to get to key, key up first? Well, I just grab the switch and turn it and wherever it looks like it's going to land instead of starting... From one side, this time I started from the back side, working my way toward the right side. The left side, right side, this is the left side. So it's sort of a convenience thing. If, if somebody's close by, it makes it easy to just grab the radio and go for it. Yes, uh, but you have the switch box right in the middle of everything, so you get to flip to whichever one you want. Actually... Actually, this here is on number four. Number five is below it, so that's what I'm going to get next. And then I come back over and hit number three, and then I hit number one. Yeah, number two. 
And number one's all flower states, so anyway. I take that back. It actually sounds a little more complicated than I would be able to do. From the collection of Chris, it says. So this could be, the radio we're showing could be the actual, the one you're talking on. You said it was a pretty blue radio. Has a red light for transmit, green light for the receive, and channel 11 is where we're parked. So give us another transmission. Okay. Yeah, no, actually it's not that hard, though. Well, you've been here. You've seen how it is. You know, where my twist box is right there in the middle. And I just go to the left or to the right, whichever way I want. This time I start to the left, which is actually be number three in my tubers. And number four is down at the bottom. And number two is back over to my right bottom. And number one is over to the right bottom, over far right. You got, you got right, second right, left, bottom left. Was it Johnny Cash that had the song about the one on the left is on the right? One on the right is on the left, and the one in the middle. So, whichever one, as long as it glows in the dark, we would like to hear it. And your radio, our radio number four, your radio number one, the Jim Marine Products G Power Mate, doing a good job filling the hole for that. Thanks. All right, we'll be back with another here in a minute. Break OTR. The break OTR, go ahead, please. Over. Uh, four zero, checking in. And uh, four zero has made it up the crickety steps into the radio room. We're putting uh, putting an X in the square for you there, over. Okay, thank you very much. We've got a concert here in Chinatown. So uh, all you uh, rapper fans, uh, come down and see the show. You get to see it for free, or hear it for free anyway. Uh, yes, I... You know, when they're when they've got their sound systems on, uh, the lights dim in our building. Thank you very much. Well, it's pretty good. I don't I don't hear any background modulation coming in, so they must be on a break. Uh, thanks for checking in. Thirty-seven. And hello, Chris. Over. And under. This is over to the left, and under the other one. So we're good. <laughs> We're going to check in our Courier Royale, a 23 channel tube that goes in the dark. This is one with all the knobs and the blinking lights and the hidden knobs in the back. So, uh, yes, this, this is the Courier Royale. It was amplified D104 Lollipop. All right, I have a question for you as we uh, put up a photo of the Courier Royale. Did, did the radio come that way or did you just add all those knobs and dials and lights. You know how you used to do when, when, when you had a bicycle, the first bicycle you got, and you add the cards and the spokes and the little things on the handlebars and this and that. Are, are you sure you didn't add that stuff? It was already there? I don't forget the balloons. And, and the balloons. I, I never did. Did I do balloons? I don't remember doing balloons because they popped. And you, you put them on too tight. No, it, 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 it came this way. It, it, it just absolutely came this way. That's a good thing. I believe this was the top of the line radio at the time for Courier. They had a couple of their models, the 23 and the 23 plus, but this particular model had all the extras. I was looking for a price on this. I, I bet it was close to $300. I don't have exact 11 tubes. They also threw in the McCollins uh, six kilohertz mechanical filter, which Typically, we're on expensive receivers of the day, amateur radio-wise, and, and I'm not sure if the Brownings, some of the Brownings have the mechanical filter in them or not, but it was a nice way of tightening up the receive, making things sound good. Uh, this was a radio that could also go mobile if you had the right proper power cord for it. But the way you're running it sounds uh, sounds pretty good. I, I hope it makes me. I hope it's got a good receiver and makes me sound good. Oh yes, it, it does. It has a it has a very fairly decent receiver. I have no trouble. You know, it's got sensitivities on it. Uh, got bandwidth for that area. It's got quieting and sensitivities, uh, tone, uh, you know, stuff like that. It's got everything. I make you sound sound beefy and bassy or. Uh, tweaking, tweaky, you know. It's a d dial, a roll your own, dial them up, whatever. Got the S meter going, you are 5 dB over S9, so it's 
Looking at a pretty nice signal here into Midtown Fresno. This is radio... Oh, I, you know, I'm talking to you and I haven't even written down what you got here. So you are Radio 5 on the uh, Courier Royale. So I will let you go take a, a, another transmission. We appreciate you jumping into the radio room, sharing your collection with us. Uh, uh, myself and the SWLs included. In fact, they're, you know, they're even enjoying it over there uh, with the Jingle Singers. Well, that, that's a real good deal there. All right, Des, I'll get out of here and uh, I'll uh, try to switch the switch and get on to another one. All right, we'll be standing by listening. I did something I have not done in weeks. I, I grabbed a really good pen. This is the first time I think I've gotten through the entire roll call and at least five radio check-ins without having to find another pen that's not running out of ink or the little ball is not rolling. This is really nice. I'm just trying to see if I can figure out what brand it is. Maybe I'll do uh, an, an unsolicited endorsement, <laughs> an unpaid endorsement for a pen that finally actually works. It is Zebra. It's a Z-grip. There it is, right there. Where's the, where's the camera? This Z-grip pen is actually working. Now, I'm checking, and it's probably what is... Probably going to run out of ink. No, it's, there's some ink in there. Looking for radio number six on the old two radio network. Uh, 37. Wow. You you get around, sir. Over. Well, well thank you. Uh, that's nice to know. Hey, this, this time here, I'm going to check in my, my other radio here, uh, one of my other ones. This is the Chris 23 Plus CB transceiver. 23 channel tuber to glows in the dark. And we're right this here with the non amplified stock, I mean, the original handheld stock microphone. Uh, over. And that, that's, uh, that works for you, right? The, the stock microphone and no fancy noisemakers or echoes or anything? No, not, none of that stuff here. I, I, I echo enough as you hear there. It's just, hey, 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 you know. I, I can echo pretty good. Yeah, I think I could do... Well, actually, I can do an echo now, but it's not, it's not that kind of an echo. It's, it's, it's a little, little bit different. I want to switch over, if I can find the right camera here, to show people what you are transmitting on. It's the Chris 23 Plus, which is the Panasonic chassis a clone of the Panasonic chassis, which I think is a lot like your Gem Marine products, G Power Mate and the Robin T one twenty three B and all of that. But it's it's a good it's a good basic radio. If you find one of these at a garage sale, yard sale, a thrift store that's got the Panasonic chassis, you, you probably can't go wrong. And you are not going wrong, Chris. Give us a transmission again on Radio Six. Okay, well, you know, I had the volume up enough. I use actually to make the modulation light work, so uh, I know you're getting out quite well, too. So, But, yes, it, it, it is working, and uh, you, you, you was making it work, too. Well, that's good. I like, to, I like to play along when I can here on the old Tube Radio Network. Chris 23 Plus, uh, the information I have on this radio is, no, it's, actually, it's a lot. 11 tubes. We have an operator's manual. If you go to oldtuberadio.com and type in Chris 23 Plus somewhere. And that has the uh, audio, the 12AX7 and the audio. I guess experimenters look for the, you can buy really expensive 12AX7 tubes to put in the guitar amps. I don't know if that would change the sound. I'm thinking it might not, because it's not high fidelity. You might not hear a difference, but... Something to consider, and you'll find more about it in Sam's CB45, page 89. Or maybe all you need to know is right here. Take another transmission, Chris. Thanks for bringing it by. Yeah, that Dennis. Well, I'm going to get out this in here, and it's going to take me a few minutes, because the other one has got to warm up. It don't have a standby, so uh, we have to turn this one up and turn that one on and pray for the best. Uh, we're out. All right, sounding good. The jingle singers are going to be cropping up here in a little bit, but in the meantime, we are listening for radio number seven. Forty-five. And Paul, 
Angela, can you hear me? I can hear you, over. Good. This is my old no-name radio listed in the unknown radio. Oh, you know, we have a couple of no-name radios. I've lost my, you know what, I need to reconnoiter here. I lost my page. So let me, let me see. Uh, yeah, I think you have your own category here on this one. And I will, I will see if I can find it while you uh, take, uh, yeah, you know what? There it is. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, take a transmission. <laughs> that's it. That's what you see right there. That's my radio. It's, uh... Definitely homemade, and I'd like to know who made it. I don't know. It's the number, it's got a CB license number on the front of it. It's a number KOA7170. I'd like to know who the man was, because I'll tell you what, he's got 10 tubes in that little bitty radio. You can see the size of it compared to the microphone. Uh, back to you, Dennis. Yeah, one of the goal calls, the three by fours. I had one. You probably had one. KOA seven one seven zero. Search through the archives at S nine magazine. Might find out where it, where it came from. Interesting. Uh, wonder if that's a a standard radio in a homebrew case. It seems like it'd be strange to do that. Like a Heath kit or something. I don't know. It's no name because we don't know. It works well. It's got, I don't know if that's the original, you changed microphones or not, because like it looks like you could plug in something different. That one looks like it's an old carbon microphone. Your audio is, is nice, so I'll be curious to know what you're doing. Are, are the controls on front labeled? They, I just see it looks like someone took a, a compass and penciled in something there. How do you know what you're doing with that thing? <laughs> well, luckily you can, uh, you see the old marks that he put on it. They were penciled in or, or I don't think penciled in. Oh, he pins in. They had, he had marked them, or it is, so you can't see it. There wasn't anything that was real visible as far as the squill, except just a little couple of the, of the letters on the thing, so it was pretty easy to figure out when you turn it on. But there's no way to know when it comes on other than to turn the switch off, because you can't see any, any lights, no meters, as you can see, nothing. You gotta look through the vent holes to see the tubes going on the back. <laughs> it does have 10 tubes in it, too, like I said. Gigantic tube section for a small, small radio. Back to you, Dad. Okay, well, the audio, the audio is nice and loud. I'll do a frequency check here next go-around. And if you told me, I, I wasn't, I didn't make a note of it. Are one of those knobs a channel selector, or are you destined to a one crystal inside the radio type of thing. Obviously, you're on channel 11. But I'm wondering if you can change channels easily over. That's it. <laughs> channel 11 is it. And you got to go inside the radio to change it. And that cover is... I'm going to change because it's all homemade. So <laughs> you just hope that you get back in shape without knocking some of the tubes over, which happens every once in a while. So I just, uh, just, uh, this uh, microphone is the Turner 350 high z microphone, stock completely. I don't know whether this thing was for this radio or not. It, I, I would say it kind of is. You don't know. Unless I talk to the fellow that made it, which would be real nice. Well, that's about it. I can't tell you much on the thing. It's, uh, that's, it's, <laughs> it's got a front fire sticker on the, on the front, two knobs, and the mic code. That's it. Back to you. Still working great. You can hear me. I can hear you just fine. Frequency at 27084.4, so maybe 600 cycles low. I think that even fits into the FCC 700 cycles rule of frequency we, where we would like you to be. Um, S8, 8S units, so no problem. I, th I, think, I think you've done good for Radio 7. Over. Yeah, real good. Sounded real good. I'm glad it's going on. That's excellent. Thanks again, Dennis. Hey, seven. All right, Radio Seven at uh, nine thirty-four, sounding good. And uh, stand by, Chris. I will be right back uh, here on the Old Tube Radio Network. You will be Radio Eight. Over. Okay.
kind of quiet out here. Uh, I think you had to go do something. to go do something? Uh, do what? Yeah, he had to go do something? Yeah, I hope he washes his hands. Oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, oh. All right, I am back. I had to go out site and check on something. I think everything is okay. So uh, we, we did leave off where SWL 37, Mr. Chris, was going to bring by radio number 8. Yes, I, I'm, I'm going to try. All right, Dennis, this is my, 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 my big radio here, which is, well, actually, well, actually it's smaller than the other ones, but I bet it weighs more than the other ones. But anyway, this is my general radio telephone, the Super MC11A, 24-channel version of this in here. And we are running this here with a non-amplified stock microphone. Over. Yeah, there's no getting around that radio. I can pretty much always tell when you have that. It's just, it's big. It's big audio, big signal. Always sounds good. And I have a, for those who are new to the old two radio network have a photo of it. It's also a very uh, good, good looking radio from uh, beautiful downtown Burbank, the General Radio Telephone Company. Let me that in there. There it is. And as Chris said, do we have a picture? There it is. We have a picture of the microphone. He's running the, the stock audio, the, the microphone that came with the radio, no amplification. It's all done with the radio itself. Back to you. Yeah, there's 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 no uh, modulation, you know, JB 12s or anything like that. Although I do have one out in the garage, Dennis. I I have I have never used it, but there is one out there, and it, you know it still works. You know, why is it? Maybe somebody get lucky and you know talk me out of it somehow or another. But anyway, it, it, there's one out there, but like I say, I've never used it yet. I figured this radio does it well enough. Yeah, you get a, the decent antenna system and, and a good radio like that one. And you don't need all that extra stuff. It's just, it's, it's a pain. It's a headache. It's one more thing to be in line between the antenna and the radio that can go wrong. And it and most most of the time it will. I think you've got to have a power supply. Just think, just think how easy it is to key down on the general radio telephone, Super MC-11. A nine tubes, two transistors. Somebody said the transistor was... To help out with like DC to DC conversion or something for for going mobile. Uh, nine tubes. The phase modulator, the ECL L800, also has the 12AX7A. Maybe you got one of those Primo 12AX7As in there as well. And that look with the rack handles. You, you can't beat that for your standard utility bang em up radio. Back to you for transmission. Well, you know, you're talking about the JB12. Uh, it does not need a uh, power supply. It's built all right into it. It's all got its own power supply, everything right in. But anyway, yeah, well, you back off that anyway. But yeah, this is, here's mine, man. You know, it's got the, uh, the, uh, the old man in the wheelchair there with the IV hanging next to him. So I know it's mine. Yeah, what, what Chris is talking about, I'll point it out if you're watching the video, the GRT logo, which I don't think, if you have a Super MC11, you will not see that the GRT logo, or as he calls, uh, like an old man sitting in a wheelchair <laughs> with an IV. I'm not sure if it showed up in the Super MC12, but it's definitely on the 11A. Our radio number eight of the evening. We will go back to you for another transmission, and thanks for bringing it by to the old Tube Radio Network. Okay, well, Dennis, that's it for me. You got the fifth one over there, the... Uh... The helicopter, so you'll have to check that one in on your own. So, uh, I don't know how I'm going to help you, but anyway, just thank you, and I, uh, I'll be listening. All right, just 
clicked into the S meter, you got an extra 5 dB off of this radio, too, thanks to the audio and and everything else. And uh, let's see, I, I may not check them verbally, but let me get back to the control picture here, and you will see what a, a way in the background here. It looks like the Bozo Control has one of his minions sitting on top of it there, but that is the uh, Halicrafters CB3A sitting in the semi-operating position. We have tested that way. It sounds really good through the audio board, believe it or not. Uh, we're looking for radio number nine, but the jingle singers would like to do what they do best and uh, tell us about the latest in a radio fashion. You're listening in the latest dialect. 27.085 megahertz. Dial, Channel 11, old tube radio. Wonderful. Fresno, California. Looking for radio number nine. Uh, break OTR. And the break OTR. In fact, Ed, hang on one. Was there another station there? Over. All right. Thought somebody jumped in there, but but they were way far away. But I can hear you just great. So uh, go ahead, Ed. Another crossband check-in, number 47. 47, all right, good. I wonder what he is up to tonight. Probably out of the barbecue, maybe. Um, although if he had the portable, the walkie-talkie, I would uh, no doubt be able to hear him because that's how he used to check in in the old days. I had to, had to find a spot. I had to find that just that right spot so that I could hear him. All right, we have uh, 47 official on all accounts. Thank you. you go ahead and proxy uh, 20 in also I heard him on the road he said he's going to check in but uh, he hasn't got here quite yet so just in case he doesn't make it will do because he didn't have sometimes he'll pre check himself in if he knows he's going to be away I find the foot switch if he knows where he's he's going to be away so I will do that and since I don't have a crossband, because that's another way you can do that. We will see, because it is, wow, it's 944 already. Time sure flies when you are having fun in the old tube radio room, and that is our goal here, the old tube radio network. That is achieved by our shortwave listeners and tube radio operators who stop by, spend their Saturday evenings with us to chat and check in a few radios. We are looking for our ninth radio coming up before we sign out tonight. Hello to all you still listening in, whether it's late Saturday night, which it is just about everywhere. I don't see anybody on the other side of the time zone that I'm in. I see a lot of you that are listening on Sunday morning. Still have uh, Maryland in and uh, British Columbia, South Carolina station from the UK perhaps where the sun is just about uh, ready to come up if, it's, if it hasn't already Captain Keyboard out there in Nevada I believe Why, I'm waiting for that short skip to happen it does but doesn't seem to be happening tonight thanks for listening and we are standing by
And if you are listening in and maybe starting to doze off, I've got just enough. I turned the RF gain down a little bit so that the channel frequency noise isn't totally squelched out or attenuated out. But I want to keep a little bit in so you can kind of think maybe you've got some nice ocean waves crashing in. Of course, until until the ocean sound is interrupted by someone going, break OTR, but that's a good thing. Or perhaps this sound. This sound may lull you to sleep. <laughs> it, it does many people. Here we go. What are the magic numbers? 27.085 megahertz, channel what 11. are the magic letters? O-T-R. Right here in... Fresno, California. Radio Magic. Old Tube Radio. For you. You know, there's somebody way out there trying. Sound like they might even be on a browning. I heard the word Alabama. Anyway, this is the old Tube Radio Network. We're here in Central California on 27085. Also audio streaming at oldtuberadio.net. And the old Tube Radio Network live for June 1st, 2019 on the video side. Listening for your Tube Radio check-ins. The old Tube Radio Network, looking for radio number nine. Also a low to our station out there in Queensland, around Brisbane, I guess, listening in. I haven't heard any Pacific coming in. Normally we'll get the Hawaii. Just been very, very quiet. But I know we'll we'll catch you all when the band opens up. So be listening 27085. Thanks for 
for tuning us in at old tube radio.net. Uh, looking for radio number eight, number nine, rather. Break. And the uh, break, go ahead. Um, today is Saturday, right? This is your Saturday night frequency over. I want to check in late, please. All right, I will go to page. I think it's three for those playing the home game. Yes, it is. And if you check the big board, you're already in. SWL 64 at his microphonium. Mr. One Eye Jack saying hello to our SWLs, and you've got you checked in. Thank you, thank you very much. Where what you're seeing, if you're watching the video, that's the Orban, the Robert Orban loudness meter with various VUs. And peak program, reconstructed peak, the CBS loud, actually I don't have the, I'm not showing the CBS loudest meter, but the ITU BS 770 short term, whatever. But anyway, that's kind of an indication of loudness and where things are, but we try to keep it around minus 20, I think is standard for minus 24, somewhere in there, standard for audio and radio stations for, for good audio. And, and we always know our tube radio operators and our tube radios have great audio. Uh, standing by for radio number nine. I have a feeling the frequency is going to be opening up just as we sign out here tonight. Break OTR. And break OTR. Well, I know you're not, you're not skip land, but uh, the next best thing over... Go ahead, radio check. Go ahead and take care of that, Dennis. Okay, well, the, the standard one would be nine pounds, good modulation, chestnut, and Herndon. But, Harvey, I'm glad you, you wandered into the radio room. Sounds like you ha you've had a long day, over. Yeah, went to work at six and got back around, I don't know, 8.30 or so, and got something to eat and turn the radio on and wandered out here. Okay, number 20, check in 29. I think you already did 135. So, um, check me in. I think I'll be available next week. And then, um, uh, do the uh, R68, T68, uh, by Browning Laboratories, uh, the, uh, Golden Beagle with the, uh, Custom D104. And we hear the skip jumping in in the background from Alabama, I think, is what they said. That is the radio you are on now, over. Roger, did you say there's skip in there? Yeah, I think there's an Alabama station kind of jumping in. Not sure. Not totally sure. But uh, things are trying trying to open up here. But I I do hear skip from the west side of Fresno. That's you. Okay, that should take care of that little bit of skip. Anyway, uh, I just checked in this radio, and that should uh, turn in, get some sleep. I got to work in the morning, so there you go. <laughs> okay, Dennis. Take care. Catch you next week. All right. They don't want to leave you alone. Here's a, sh a picture from a brochure. Their beauty shot on the, the table with the uh, velvet cloth, the Golden Eagle by Browning. This was the next radio after what we heard earlier from Paul, the R27 S23 from 1964 to 66, from 1967 to 68. Just a one-year run on this, and I think they, the Mark II came out, but this was the Mark I, the Mark None, or the first original Golden Eagle from the Eagle of the Golden Eagle by Browning. And as you can hear from Harvey's radio, still sounding, still sounding pretty good. Try and find a, a 1968 automobile that's uh, rolling down the street that nice here in 2019. Uh, thanks, Harvey. Okay. Yeah, that uh, Morrow radio that I had last week. Yeah, station one, you're going to uh, check in standby. Four and 
that is a five wide tree. Uh, dead key is a watt higher, swing is about a watt and a half higher. The only problem is it's a bigger 5U4, not the model type, but the regular type glass, but a little taller one, and I cannot get the cabinet on. So I'm going to try for a uh, slightly smaller 5U4, see if it'll still do the same output. If not, I might uh, do the diode trick get it to do a little bit more. And I tried um, a different microphone. Nope. I pulled the uh, hand mic apart, and it's a carbon mic, uh, a telephone style carbon mic similar to uh, what's used in the sonars with the little amp circuit that the sonar puts in the mic. But this one doesn't have the amp circuit. This one just has a transformer that uh, gets about 10 or so volts, I think, and it goes direct into the 6AQ5 uh, audio tube. It's always something. Well, it was, it, like I said, it was working. It seems like the solid state thing would be okay to do, I and mean, if you're a purist, maybe don't don't like that, but I think it has some advantages, get rid of some heat. I was just getting around to uh, do all that. Now, if you're like Bosa Control, you would just keep spraying WD-40 until it came out, but I don't think you want to do that. No, I don't think so. Okay, I gotta go. I'm, I'm tired. So, uh, we'll turn it back to you, and I will be available next week, so uh, we'll catch you then. All right, sounding good. And I think you may have a, a breaking station that you may or may not be able to hear, so don't go away uh, just yet. Radio number nine, the R68, T68, the Browning Golden Eagle. And I'm not sure if that was the same station that, that broke in earlier, but uh, go ahead with your traffic for uh, anybody on frequency. Over. Yeah, can, uh, hey, Harvey, can you hear me? Someone was calling for you. Harvey, can you hear that station? Over. No, not with my dinky antenna. Go ahead and let me know. Yeah, who is that calling for Harvey? Over. Hey, this is Tom. Uh, I just need to get a hold of him. I want to talk to him about Cowboy's old, uh, old tube radio. It's a green one. I can't remember what it is on the end. It's a green uh, old tube radio that Cowboy's had. Yeah, Tom is out there at some point wanting to talk to you about Cowboys old tube radio, uh, the one that was green over. Yeah, what was that, Dennis? Station by the name of Tom, who you might know, wanted to talk to you at some point about uh, Cowboys old tube radio, the old green one. Which radio is that? I. I'm a little tired, so I'm not understanding. Yeah, I can't remember. Tell them it's MQT. Tell them that. Uh, what was the letters again? Over. Mike Quebec Golf. Yeah, it's uh, Tom uh, MQG. Who? You know what? Let me let me check something. No, okay. I was going to say uh, you used to be on the list, but I think. I think that's an old list, but that's uh, Tom MQG wanted to talk to you about some old radios. Okay, I, uh, I can't hear him. I'll be back next week, but guess what? I probably won't be able to hear him. Uh, if he's got my phone number, he can call me. Uh, if you want to give him my phone number, that'd be fine if he wants to call me. But I, I'm sorry, I just can't hear have you got a two meter functioning two meter in the house? Do I have a what? A functioning two meter radio in the house. Oh yes I do. One forty six five fifty. And yeah, unless uh, he's too far away for that, which I doubt, and then it would be the uh, two meter repeater that I use. But I uh, ask him if one forty six five fifty will do. I think we're too far away. What repeater will we come up on? What repeater?
Yeah, uh, give him a repeater because he's going to probably need to hit, hit a repeater to get you. Oh, gosh. Um, I still use the CVRC repeaters. I have those. Um, all programmed in. Um, if he has those, uh, the two meter one, uh, I'd be on that. But if he gives me another one, I can probably go to it. One four seven one five zero or one four seven one eight. I didn't mean to cut in on your guys' conversation there. It's 7.35, Jim, over here in Clovis, Cal. We just wanted to let you know you guys are both sounding real fine out here. All right, thanks, Clovis. We're here all over the place in central Fresno and beyond. 14715 or 14718. Um, if you've got those programmed in, Harvey, over. Okay, if you hang tight for a few minutes, I'll go in the house. The two meters there. One four seven one five and one eight. Yes, over. Okay, I'm heading in there. All right, thanks for your check-in, and uh, Tom, be listening on the one five or the one eight. And when he gets dialed in, you should be able to pick him up that way. Ain't radio great? The old tube radio network. Hello to our Clovis station. We are usually out here on Saturday evenings talking with and talking about the classic tube radios, 11-meter uh, tube radios, which we have been doing tonight. Still time for Radio 10 to pop in. I'm going to do some counting and amounting. Let's see, the Jingle Singers should be ready to go. And we'll be back in a moment. OTR standing by. You're tuned to OTR. And your Channel 11. Right here in Fresno, California. Stay with us. Old Tube Radio. And be Last call for check-ins of any kind, the old tube radio network listening. He said he had to go into the house to grab the radio, so uh, be listening on that one because he's probably unless he's unless he's got the iPhone on where he can hear us here on OTR, we'll see. But if you are monitoring uh, Harvey, try the one four seven one five up, and it does have a PL the one four three uh, PL. I got him at S7. The audio is a little weak, but I can actually hear you, and it's doing good. And of course, of course, you don't have to be glowing in the dark to uh, key down and, and give us a holler. It's good, to, good to hear you. I've 
my mobile radio is out, and the one here, the desk is is off, so I haven't been on on the other frequencies much lately. So I have to do that and give you guys a call. Yeah, I used to hear you on the ten meter band, but uh, yeah, I think other things are going on. I don't know how that is. But uh, anyway, this this one is going to my bad, and that's about it. Okay, sounding good, Tom. I'm going to be counting some numbers here, and we're standing by OTR. Dennis, no good in the house. Okay, you you can't hit uh, Harvey. Harvey is now back. You can't hit the one five uh, one four seven one five from the house. Now, okay, I might, yeah, but it would be better in the car. I could try the house, but the problem is. All the ones in the car are uh, programmed in by their call. So, you know, uh, not by uh, frequency. I mean, if I could remember, unfortunately, wait, or fortunately, which button to push to go back, the problem is you have to change each one. So I have to know, is it the Madero repeater? Is it this? Is it a Clovis one? And what the uh, uh, basic call is, and then I probably got it in there. Uh, Was that Racy's or Madeira? Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Yeah, have you got? Do you think you have one that's programmed for Racy's, uh, R-A-C-E-S, or Madeira? I think I do. Um, isn't uh, one of the Madeira repeaters called the 1-8 repeater? Yeah, that would be the 14718, I believe would be in Madeira. Okay, I got it. Okay, let's see if I can find it. I'll just go out to the car because I'm more familiar with that two meter in the car than the one in the house. The one in the house is a little different. I'll go out to the car and I should be able to hit Madeira from my house. So I'll be out there in a minute. Okay, he's going to try the 1-8 Madeira. Thanks, Harvey, for staying up late to see if this works. Uh, any other uh, stations for the old tube radio network? And the skip is happening. Let me scan the 10-meter uh, beacon frequencies before I sign out here tonight on the, on the stream and see what we're going to do. All right, um, over to our other studio, where if I can get the attention... They're having a big party over there. Get the attention of Mr. Nounce and the orchestra. We can... Here we go. This is the Old Tube Radio Network. Ladies and gentlemen, stand by. It's time now for the current OTR totals. Time now for the curtain, current and final totals. I better get some water because I've got to talk a little bit here. Uh, go back to the studio. Hey, Hi, everybody. I'm still here, the Old Tube Radio Network, where tonight we had uh, 57 SWLs checking in, 12 on page 1, 13 on page 2, 14 on page 3, and 18 on page 4. And a total of nine radios, as it is just a nice day and nice evening here. I know a lot of you are out doing whatever it is that you need to do if you were listening in onto the audio stream. Thank you, and we will catch you uh, next week if we can. Radio Wise, the most heard manufacturer tonight was uh, Browning Laboratories. Started off, though, with the general radio telephone, the MC4. That was Steve's radio, and what, what a difference from last week. He did a little peeking and tweaking the right way. Got the audio sounding very nice, frequencies right on. Everything's doing great. I think the uh, the... Dr. J radio will play nicely. I know SWL1 is, is uh, <laughs> giving a high five right now on that MC4. Thanks, Steve. Radio number two, Paul on the Browning Raven. That is the mobile version from Browning of basically the R27 S23. Came out about the same time in 1965 and playing quite well tonight here on the old tube radio network. Thanks, Paul, for that. He followed that up with the base unit, the R27 S23, sounding even better. Radios 4, 5, and 6 from Christonite, the Gem Marine product G Power Mate, followed by the Courier Royale and then his Chris 23 Plus. Radio 7, Paul, on the unknown, no name radio. I think I'll pull that one up. Usually I'll leave a picture up 
at the uh, ultraradio.net website. I'll leave that up. If anybody is, knows that call sign or is familiar with that radio, leave, a, leave us a note. So we'll see. Maybe we can put a name to that no-name radio, but it's been over 30 years. So uh, good luck on that. Radio number eight, Chris, on the general radio telephone, Super MC 11A. And then we followed things up, as you just heard, with the R68 T68 Browning Golden Eagle. Thanks, everybody, for uh, staying up late tonight. And those of you who uh, tuned in on the video and those still listening, Washington. I heard Alabama. We've got Australia hanging out, seeing if we can get some conditions. Maryland's still in there. Maryland, Washington. I'm, I'm sure as soon as I fire it down, turn things down, things will open up. Even even X four thousand is beaconing up to the to the uh, space station in orbit to see if he can bounce some signals down here into the Central Valley. He's done it before, but I don't know. I don't think I don't think the ISS has their radio tuned to eleven meters. Maybe I can send them a note. <laughs> that would be something. Little spacecraft thing. Well. Anybody know a CBer who's an astronaut? Maybe we get them up in the in the space station. They'll be able to tune the radio around. I want to thank uh, uh, SearchLawrence.com and Frodex for keeping the Nixie tubes running, and all of you for keeping us running here on the old tube radio next work, network. Until next week, and let's see what is next week. Next week going to be tight. I have a radio station fundraiser happening, but I think I will be back in time to to dial up the dials and spin the wheels. So uh, look forward to doing some more tube radio. Good night, everybody, and 73 from your old tube radio network. Thank you, Samus. Good night, OTR. Everybody's listening on the audio stream or the video stream. I'm going to fire the receiver up to 10 meters and see if there's any 10 meter beacon activity. Oh, well, there's the Hawaiian Islands. I'll see where we're going. I'll be back. Looking for that. Beacon stuff. Just heard a Y coming there. I know we had a station listening in from Australia. Wait, nothing. That's on the wimpy antenna here. That's just a birdie. Guess the MUF just hasn't quite come up to 28 megs yet. One more, one more spin of the dial here. Come on, anybody. Well, the band is opening up, so keep listening wherever you are. All right, back to 8085. You can hear the band, like I said, the band just opened up. There you go. That's Hawaii. Are they in the gray line? Let's see, it's 10 o'clock here, eight. Yeah, see, they're, they're, Hawaii is just in the gray line right now, so that's what we're hearing. As the sun goes down over there, we get the conditions. All right, good night, everybody. How about those Hawaiian islands? Them Hawaiian Islands, 603, Fresno, California, standing by. Let's see if Joe can make it. No Rajo, no Dajo on those Hawaiian Islands. Five, top of the evening to you, 603, Fresno, Cal, clear. Good luck all you DXers, uh, OTR will be back next week, 73.